one. You have tuned in to Greater Pioneer's Missionary Baptist Church, located at 6758 South Wabash Avenue. Our zip code is 60637. Uh, and Reverend Kevin Wilson, our pastor, we invite you to come and wish with us. Our service starts at 1130. Today we'll be doing things a little different. We're going to do the seven last words of Jesus Christ when he spoke on the cross. I'll be doing the first one, then uh, the ministers will follow there after me. Amen. Amen. So uh, I'll be doing the first one, and then he's taken from uh, the book of Luke, <coughs> chapter 23, verse 24. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that fought. And the murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. His first word was, <clears throat> Father, forgive them, for they know mm -hmm. not what they do. Yes. This second from the book of Luke. And uh, if you had been there on that Friday, mm. that uh, in Jerusalem, on that Friday when the word was turned upside down, well. that Je the last miracle Jesus performed was he had called raised Lazarus from the dead. Mm -hmm. And there was a big roar. There was a big turnout. Psalm was happy and Psalm was angry. And Psalm wanted to put him to death because he was getting too popular, getting too famous. So if you had been there on that Friday, things when the world was turned upside down, this excitement was born you know, the fact that prisoners was about to be, <clears throat> Jesus was about to be put to death. There was three men there. One of them was a prophet, and the other two was revolutionaries. No. And you know what they are? They are, would do anything to change things their way. <clears throat> and we saw that in January of the 6th. <laughs> the week, the summer, the summer, the okay. <laughs> so they, they was there and they didn't mind being, you know, uh, so things was got out of hands there. So all three of the men were well known and popular, but that was for different reasons. The mobs will not allow Jesus to be crucified in peace. The man on the center of the cross prayed the prayer. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Well. And the first word that was out of Jesus' mouth was a prayer. <coughs> he spoke upon them was a prayer when he was up on the cross. Does not surprise us that the whole life of Jesus was about prayer that he spoke the first word out of his mouth on the cross was a prayer. Because he was a man of prayer. Every, all the way from his youth, he was a man of prayer. <clears throat> when he prayed under the such circumstances in our need, whenever we pray in under such circumstances, we cry out, Lord help us. Mm. It's a short prayer, mm. but we mean it from our mm -hmm. heart. So Jesus meant it from his heart. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then, and then when he got ready to go to the grave, that he, he may be obtained in mercy, for mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Jesus prayed was God for himself, mm. Mm. but he prayed for others. Yeah. He cried out for others, but he prayed 
not for his, himself, but for his enemies who was hanging on the cross and nailed to the cross. When God forgives, he takes us back as his friend and walk with us and teach us. When he forgives us, walk with us. Mm. And he teaches us and talks with us and take us back and put us back in the right standards. Yes. He Every forgets time. all our ugly pants. Oh, yes. 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 This is he died for us yes. and shed his blood for us. I will not forgive their iniquities and I will remember them no more. Come on. Jesus gave a reason why the Father shall grant his request. He gave a reason. What did Jesus mean by saying they know not what they are doing to him and put him in the dead? They did know. They did know what they was doing. Pilate knew what he was doing. Come on. He washed his hands because he saw all his soul. Because he knew that he had done wrong. He realized that he had done wrong. He realized that he had, it's his soul was sore. Judas knew what he had done. Jesus hurried out, emptied his pocket of his 30 pieces of silver. Because he knew what he had done wrong. Father feels him. And he did so with guilt. When he washed his hands, with the blood was on his hands, and he had done wrong. In what sense were they ignorant? They knew not what they were was doing. They did not realize Come on, just how great and bad it was. They didn't know that they was doing uh, uh, God's work God. when they put him to death. Come on now. But they did. <laughs> They didn't really know. That's the reason Jesus said, forgive them. They don't really know what they are doing. Jesus said, forgive them, but they need forgiveness real bad. They, they need forgiveness real bad. We must be willing to receive that forgiveness. <coughs> Only those who feel that need of forgiveness will give God a chance. Forgiveness is freely and eagerly offered Come on, to man. everyone. And we should be willing to receive. We will have it from the next minister to come and give his word. Good morning. Good morning. I have the second word for the day. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones the first, and I'm one of the associate minister here. They come from Luke, the 23rd chapter, and the 43rd verse. And Jesus said unto him. Verily, I say unto you, today shall thou be with me in paradise. Well, yeah. It said, today, yes. not later. Well. <laughs> so salvation is instantaneous. It has nothing to do with getting going into a water to get baptized. It has nothing to do with the, even being inside of a church. This man, a, he wasn't a thief. That's the, but after I did my research, he was a revolutionary. Yes. He was much like Jesus himself. He wanted to overthrow 
the powers to be. But Jesus was looking for a spiritual overthrowing, whereas this revolutionary was looking for a governmental overthrow. Teach it, teach it. And, and, and see, uh, the, if you go to the same chapter, the three verses prior, starting at verse 39, there's, there's the two thieves are one on each side of Jesus, each on the cross, they self have a discussion. The one thief, the hater, God. He said, well, if you be the cross, why don't you save yourself and me right now? <laughs> now, the one that realized that he was toe up from the flow up, he said, hey, bro, chill out. We Come on, deserve what we get. This man has done no harm. So he was praying for his soul. He knew when he was in the presence of Jesus on that cross, you can't be in the presence of Jesus without all your sin well, being revealed. Because you can't stand in the room with God and don't realize that you are a wretch. Undone. And Jesus answers and tells him, you're going to be in heaven today. Mm -hmm. He didn't say you had to wait. It didn't say that he had to undo any of his last, his past wrongs. It didn't say that he had to do any other thing. But because he believed that this was the Christ. He would be in heaven today. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. If you grab Jesus' hand right now, your past shall be erased for all. And, and see, you got to understand that it's not that you hear enough of Jesus is that you need to know more about Jesus. Mm, well. Because without Jesus, there is no salvation. salvation. Mm. And without salvation, mm, come on. there is no everlasting life. All right, man. 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 I got to have this mic. I'm soft spoken. Okay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. My text comes from John, the 19th chapter, the 25th through the 27th verses. When Jesus there foresaw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciples, Behold thy mother. Now the three words I'm going to deal with is compassion, love. trust, and love. Come on, Come on. This third word was addressed to Mary and to his beloved disciple. Of all others, these were nearest to him in loyalty and in devotion. Here we have his final message to the two whom he loved the best. Jesus spoke here as a family man, as a devoted and dutiful son. Mary was Jesus' earthly mother. I can only imagine the pain in her heart watching her beloved son dying on the cross. Yet she knew it was all God's will. Jesus had compassion for her. She was going to lose a son, but from now on, John would be like a son. 
Jesus provided for his mother. He did not neglect her needs, even while on the cross. What could he give Mary? He gave John the disciple whom he loved. And from that very hour, John took her into his own house. If Jesus cared for his mother, we ought to care for ours too. No matter how much pain you may be in Jesus, he is thinking about you. And the, only, and the reason why he is thinking about you is because he loves and cares for you. Hallelujah. Perhaps the most astonishing fact of all is that Jesus told his mother to adopt another son ah. when she already had four sons of her own. She also had at least two daughters. Jesus completely ignored them. He passed by them as if they were dead and instructed his mother to a friend. Now, he, when he passed by them, when it, them is his family. I found out as I was reading, his family was a hot mess. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Mary wasn't too much better. But, uh, you know, I found out also that uh, she had a few screws that was, wasn't tight. Come on. Okay. Uh, she was more or less, she was perplexed with him, and she really didn't understand him. Uh, because a lot of things that she addressed to him, he always said he got his instructions from his father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, she went on with it, but she really couldn't understand it. Even Mary, in spite of her love for him and pride in him, could never quite understand him. We see while Christ is on the cross, his character is compassion, love, and trust. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Come on. There's a precious fountain. Free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. Yes. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. I got one request that I want everybody to do, and that is sit at his feet yeah. and yeah, be yeah, blessed. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength. O oh Lord, my strength. O oh Lord, my strength. And my redeemer. God bless us to bless somebody else. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. St. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. St. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. St. Matthew, the gospel, first gospel of the New Testament, chapter 27, 
verse 46. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken thee? Amen. Amen. That's it. That's all. <clears throat> Pardon me why I teach this. It was these words that Jesus <coughs> uttered from the cross somewhere around the ninth hour. It was about 3 o'clock p.m. These words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Painfully were spoken from the mouth of Jesus. I need you to understand. Jesus born of a virgin. This is Jesus. They laid in a manger with swaddling clothes. This is Jesus. God's only begotten son. This is who? Jesus. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You get with me. Jesus anointed for this divine design destiny to save the world from their sins. It is Jesus. Jesus, who according to one of the Gospels, were placed on the cross somewhere around 9 o'clock a.m. This is Jesus who was given vinegar to drink. This was actually a common practice. It was a custom uh, to give to condemned prisoners drugged wine to act as an anesthetic during that time. But they didn't understand they were not dealing with any ordinary criminal, any ordinary prisoner. This is Jesus. Can't say they didn't know who it was because above his head they wrote the words, this Jesus, king of the Jews. Could it have been that they didn't understand who he was? Yes, yes, that's it, that's it. They didn't understand that this was Jesus. Jesus so rejected by the same folks who celebrated him just five days before. Throwing palms on the ground, shouting Hosanna to the highest. You heard Reverend read it. This is Jesus. They were, were they now just speaking words? Were they just talking out the side of their necks? You know how we do it. Could it be? Possibly. Those who just five days ago were celebrating him and now along with those they're shouting crucify him. Were these the same people who are now jaw jacking? This is Jesus. Were they just talking and yelling because everybody else was talking and yelling? Ah, you there. Did they just want to be part of the crowd? We don't, maybe they don't even understand the depth of what's going on. You know, there are times we just move with the crowd. We don't know what's happening. We don't care. We just move with the crowd. We don't understand the important part of what's going on. A part of something epic is happening. Yeah, epic, epic, epic. There are many, you know me in words. I say that you don't throw a word around unless you know what it means. Ah. As a matter of fact, epic isn't anything new. Come on, man. You may think of epic as uh, having something crazy or something good or something big. Read this. This is epic. Ah. What happens at the cross, check out verse 45. It says from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, there was complete darkness over the land. Well, That's epic. Well. Uh, it wasn't a solar eclipse. It wasn't a lunar eclipse. On, yeah. It was the Son of God taking on the sins of the world. That's yeah, epic. Come on, come on. From yeah. noon to 3 p.m., yes. darkness yeah. covered everything. Yes, yes, That's epic. Yes, yes. From yes. high noon, when we usually, it's the clearest part of the day. God. The sun shines brightest at ah. noon. The sun, <coughs> who once was formed and was set carefully in the sky, the S-U-N, the sun, who coordinates morning, noon, and night, didn't shine. Come on. That's epic. Yeah. yeah. The sun, S-U-N, mm. was perfectly and proudly ushers in the seasons, winter. The sun does that spring. The sun does that summer and fall. It didn't shine. That's epic. The sun 
has enough light to stand above the earth during the day, give light to the moon during the evening, and give a little twinkle to the stars in the midnight ah. hour. <laughs> the sun <laughs> didn't shine. That's epic. It was as if the sun, S-U-N, saw what was happening to the sun, S-U-N, and said, no, I will not participate in this madness. The sun didn't shine. That was epic. So the next time you think of something epic and you want to say that word, might you consult the Bible? Mm. Because that's epic. <clears throat> it was at this moment, it was at this moment, it was at this moment as uh, from noon to three, it was darkness and <laughs> Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? I would be remiss as a teacher, as an educator, if I didn't finish setting the scene for you. This is Jesus hanging on the cross. He could barely breathe. And the only words that can come from his mouth are today's scripture. It's here where humanity meets the divine. Our humanity right now. Jesus knows it's all about men. We mm. tell each other, it's not about you. Don't worry, it's not about you. We try to encourage, don't worry, it's not about you. It's all about him. People often say, especially in the church sector, it's, it's not about you. This time it's okay. Guess what? It's about you. Ah. Just in case you don't understand, have you ever been in a situation that seems everybody is doing their own thing and you ask, what about me? Sure. You've been available for everybody else. You've been there when they wanted you and even when they needed you. Now, all of a sudden, you can't find anybody to pick up your groceries. What about me? No one's been available to grab the prescriptions for you, Sister Yvette. Always answer, but now that I'm calling, you send me straight to voicemail. Uh. <laughs> what about me? Jesus ends his question with me. Yes, this day, this crucifixion, this situation, it's all about me. Say me. 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 You're not say, say me. 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 There you go. There you go. Yeah, it's about you. It's about our sins. It's about us. It's about our transgressions. Yes, it's about us. It's about our faults. Yes, it's about us. It's about our mistakes. Yes, it's about us. It's about our mishaps. Yes, it is about us. It is about our mess ups. It is about me. me. Yes, this fourth word, it's all about me. Maybe you've grown up and never had a problem trial or tri tribulation, but I've had some stuff to go down in my life. It was dark because of my sin. Sin blanket in my life in complete darkness. <coughs> and it was about me. And I was fine in the dark. Because in the darkness, I can hide. Ah, come on. A lot of stuff can happen in the dark that you may not even find in the light. Forsaken, 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 forsaken. Why has thou forsaken me? You know, uh, as we do our research, and ministers do research, uh, forsaken, have you ever been abandoned? That's forsaken. You ever been denied? That's forsaken. You ever been rejected? That's forsaken. You ever been disowned? Talk to me, somebody. Have you, have you ever had been discarded? You ever felt like you were discarded? Well, well. People didn't know. And, yeah. uh, rejected? Yeah. Departed from? Somebody just left. They just left me. Uh, one of the babies, they just sent you off somewhere? Mm. Ever felt isolated, ignored? Yeah. All that's forsaken. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Uh huh. Uh huh. He says, "My God, my God, why? Why is the favorite is the three year old's favorite word? But why? Why does a plane fly? Why does a dog bark? But why? Have you ever just asked why? Why? As if knowing the answer to why is going to make you feel better. 
Uh, really, it just layers on the problem. Come on now. But you ask, why? Here's Jesus. He asks, why? Let me take a moment and say that if I could pin a title to this conversation, it would be do what Jesus would do. Jesus cries out, my God, my God. Here is Jesus on the cross. He's taking on more and more. He's taking on our sins. It is complete darkness. But as Jesus gives his life, Jesus knows what to do. Jesus does what he says he's going to do. He looks to the hills from which comes his help. And all of his help comes from where? And Jesus hollers out, my God, my God. My uh, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, if you call on the name of Jesus, well, well. something will happen. It may not happen <clears throat> right away. Uh, and you may can't hear him. But I guarantee you, as you feel abandoned, rejected, and disowned, Jesus is working for your faith on the other end. Don't worry about if you don't see him. Don't worry about if you don't think he's not working for you. His time is not your time, thank God. His yeah. words are not my work, thank God. I know that he's ahead of me, and he's working it out for my good. I know that he's giving me strength to come to this day. Let me tell you, I've had to call on Jesus for a few yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. I've had to ask where he was, because I didn't feel it. I didn't want it. I didn't think it was funny getting this word. But all oh, when I cried, my God. Have you ever tried to call him? It's nice and cute in church, but I'm talking about 3 a.m. in the morning. I'm talking about when you get that phone call that another one has passed, that another one's in the hospital, another one has had a car accident. I haven't had time to cry for the other one. But oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, call him, call him. Do what Jesus did, call him. Amen. Everybody, my name is Reverend Eric D. Lamar, and I got the fifth word for today. Before we move further, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now to say thank you, Father thank God. You. Our Father God, I say thank you for these seven words. This fifth word, Father God, remove Eric D. Lamar from this place, Father God, and let your spirit work through me, Father God. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I will be speaking from the fifth word, and it comes out of the book of John, the 19th chapter, verse 28. John, the 19th chapter, verse 28, and the word reads as such. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith. I thirst. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. Have you ever been thirsty? <laughs> no, have you ever been yes. thirsty? Yes. No, you haven't. <laughs> See, you walked into that. Jesus said, I thirst. Makes you think. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been very hungry before. So hungry with two words, though I can have what's called a hunger headache. But try being extremely thirsty. Where the insides 
have been dehydrated, dried up to the point where they feel as though they're going to crack. Where, 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 where there's just a, a drip of the, the thought of a drip of water. It just quench it and make it feel better. The thought of having a quenched thirst. Here we have Jesus hanging on the cross. Knowing that his life here on this earth is coming to an end. Also knowing all the things that were done before he got to this moment in his life. Knowing that one of his closest homies would sell him out for just a few pieces of change. Knowing that 10 of his followers would leave him alone except for John. When he didn't benefit Peter any longer, he denied even knowing him. Jesus had been beaten with sticks, rocks, kicked, carrying his own cross. The soldiers had stripped Jesus from his clothing. And then they had the nerve to shoot dice to determine who would take the clothing. How about it? Just a few weeks before he's hanging on the cross, he had thousands and thousands of people following him. He's preaching his word, performing miracles. They were all on his side. And to put it all to the side, his mother had to see him at the worst point would thought to be in his life. Mm. Church family and friends, a lot of us can relate to Jesus. Mm. Well. Many of you have been sold out ah. by your bro Come on. or your sis. Mm. Many of you have been talked about, name dragged through the mud, ah. consistently <laughs> trying to be a blessing Consistently trying to minister to others. Consistently showing love and care and compassion to others. Hmm. Scripture says, and starts off, after this. After all the torture and Jesus had to take from the people, after this, Hmm. He still knew, though, that he had a purpose. Jesus knew he had been called to do a job. Well, and he knew something about this job that he had to do. Yeah. He knew it wouldn't be easy. Mm. Because if it was going to be easy, anybody could have done it. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus, knowing all things were accomplished, just simply means that Jesus had done everything that he can do. And just like Jesus, it's been things that go on in our lives that we have no control over. People that we try to change. Children acting crazy. Spouses acting crazy. You know what? Sometimes you got to get to a place where in life I've done all that I can do. See, when you have a task and it's been complete in certain people's lives sometimes, in certain situations, God sends us to do certain things for a season. And sometimes what we do is we try to prolong that season. Sometimes what we do is we try to take the wrong people into that next season. When you've been called to be in that person's life for a season. Huh. So I think what we need to do is just quit trying to be Jesus. <laughs> if we can't Come on, preacher. go any further, we need to stop and pray. Amen. 
That's what he did at the cross. Well, Stop and pray. Because if they sent Jesus to the cross, what you think they going to do to you? Well. I just want y'all to think about this. Uh -huh. I don't want you to forget this here. And I have to just write a few things down about Jesus and his resume. You know, so first things first, he came out the gate. He ain't played no games. And he turned water into wine. Well. Uh -huh. Jesus then went straight down to the spot, to the temple, and he cleaned up everything that he seen was wrong. He seen them lame animals, them sitting around there. Y'all get up out of there. Woo! Got to go. He went and took care of business. Then, yeah. let me tell you, he gave everybody a hint. He said, God so loved the world that he, that he would give his only be son. So whosoever believeth would not perish would have ever lasting life. Lasting life. Then Jesus went down to Galilee. To the nobleman's house. God. And so he went down to the nobleman's house. And he said, the nobleman said, I have a son that's sick. And he said, no worries at all. Go back down there. He ain't sick no more. See, Jesus had a resume. So he went down there and healed what? his boy's friend. See, Jesus told the man at the pool that was there for 38 years. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. This is a walk down of how Jesus was blessing before he went to this cross. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? So he sat there for 38 years. Crippled 38 years. Jesus came on and set, he told him to take up his stuff and walk. And he did. See what I'm saying? Jesus has a resume. See, this ain't just about what was done right then and there. See, we got to know what Jesus that's has right. done from yes. the beginning to take us all the way to the cross because that's the finished work. The finished work was everything that he did. His 33 years of living on this earth. That's part of the accomplished work because without that living in the world, without him seeing, without him the healing, without the deliverer, we wouldn't have nothing yeah, to stand yeah. on. on. He's thirsty because he put in so much work. He's thirsty because he He's at the cross and he's alone. But oh my God, he even had daddy troubles on the cross. He was sitting there and he thought, oh my God, like you said, why would you forsake me? Oh my God, I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ, the best part of it all for me is was woman at the well. See, I couldn't understand why it was that he was thirsty. But then I thought about it because the woman at the well, see, things hadn't already been accomplished yet. So he was just letting her know who he was without telling her who he was. But he told her so much, I couldn't understand how she didn't know exactly who he was, but she went and she told somebody else, but he told her, I'm going to tell you about the water that you've given me. You will thirst again. But the water that I have to give to you, you will never ever never ever thirst again. So what I come to tell you today is Thank you, Jesus, for taking off all my troubles, all my iniquities. Y'all better thank him because if it wasn't for Jesus, you wouldn't be sitting here right now. If it wasn't for Jesus, you couldn't call him for healing. If it wasn't for Jesus, you couldn't call him for deliverance. If it wasn't for Jesus, you wouldn't have no light in your life. If it wasn't for Jesus, you'll be still in bondage. If it wasn't for Jesus, there will be no place called home. If it wasn't for Jesus! Come on, preacher. And the thirst. Where would we be? Yeah. That was the fifth word. Amen. 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 Come on, Robin Joe. <laughs> I have now six words. Father God, thank you again for another day. Thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and thank you for the Holy Spirit, a comfort of God. Thank you for your word, Father. And as we go to continue, we ask that your word come out, spirit and truth, decently in order, according to your will and your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. John, the 19th chapter, and the 30th verse. And when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. And for the edification of our soul, you know, it was a TV show. In fact, I still watch it. It's on 
this one of those streaming services, they got their own channel. It was called Mission Impossible. But Jesus said, it is finished. Mm. Mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Jesus, what was finished? The work that God, the Father, who wrapped himself up in a bag of bones to come down and live in this sin-rich world had been completed. Uh, there was no, Jesus couldn't have died a day earlier or a day later. He had to die exactly when he died. Because it had already been foretold by the prophets, mm -hmm. not only when, but how, and the lies that they would tell on my Jesus. Mm -hmm. He, he uh, basically what he did right here, he took his own blood and put a period at the end of his life. Mm. It is finished. Period. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing to add to it. Ain't nothing to take from it. Right. It is what it is. And it, it, it will always be what it is. Because, see, you got to remember, he said it's fin it is finished, but we were still messed up. Well, While we was yet mm. in our sins, he died for us. Yeah. That's Romans 5 and 6. And then the next verse said, even if I was a righteous person, it would be hard to find somebody dying for me. So what kind of man was it that died for all us unrighteous folks? And, and Jesus never saw the end of his work here on earth. He's on the cross. He just gave, gave up the ghost. And the world is still tore up from the flow up. But he left. That's the next part of the mission accomplished. Now we got to do our part. Matthews 28 and 19 say, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name Holy of the Holy Ghost. What are you waiting on? <laughs> Have you taught anybody this week? And I'm not talking about out of a Bible or out of a Sunday school book. Hey, hey, can somebody read Jesus in your walk? Can somebody ah! read Jesus in your talk? Whoa. Can somebody see Jesus when you're walking down the street? On, Can right, somebody right, on, see Jesus right. when you're sitting in your living room? On, Can somebody on. see Jesus any time this week? Yeah. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Ooh, I feel like I got a light right now. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Because see, see, it's finished. That means I ain't got a word. But I got to do my part. Christianity is a player participation sport. That's right. hmm. If you're on the team, you don't sit on the bench. We don't have no reserves. No Everybody's a starter. <laughs> right. Amen. You ain't gonna never be cut. Yeah. You don't get no pink slip. You can't become, you're not a free agent. They're not gonna wave you. Jesus is not gonna wave his children. Well. But he wants us to finish the work that he finished. But really, it was the start. Because Jesus was in a body. He was contained. As a human, he still was like us. He could only be in one place at one time. Yes. But when you got the spirit, plant the seed. Somebody come behind and water. Yes, yes. And then somebody else shall reap the increase. Mm -hmm. 
But if you don't ever plant no seed, it ain't nothing to water. And it won't be nothing to harvest. Because nothing from nothing leaves nothing. But because of my Jesus, well, everything comes from him. All blessings flow from the foot of Jesus. There is no blessing without Jesus. And you need to know that you know it is finished. But you still got a part to participate in. And when we do our parts, each one of us individually, we can see a change in our lives. We can see a change in the community. We can see a change in the world. God bless us and God keep us all. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Good afternoon. I am Sernicia Lamore, and I am the guest speaker today with the seventh word. Right now, I just want to bow my head in prayer. Father God, I lift myself up to you right now on this holy altar. Father God, fill me with your holy word, Father God. Let the words out of my mouth be pleasing to you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Luke, the 23rd chapter, the 46th verse. That is the last word Jesus spoke at the cross. Those are Jesus' final words before he gave up the ghost at the ninth hour. It is approximated that Jesus was tormented on Calvary for six hours. That's a long time to endure any form of pain coupled with harassment and humiliation for a crime he didn't commit unjustly accused and persecuted. It had to be a horrible, traumatizing experience for Jesus and also the many onlookers, especially those that were greatly acquainted with him. Mm. Here, Jesus is being crucified in front of the same very people we came to save from destruction. Come on. Jesus had to remain steadfast in his loyalty to God, his Father. <laughs> he continued to be benevolent, knowing God would strengthen him and uphold him with his righteous right hand. Jesus could not afford to get out of character. His Father, God's kingdom, was at hand. Mm -hmm. He knew he was in trouble, but there was still work for Jesus to do. He had to get ready to go prepare a place for us. Mm -hmm. In Psalm 31, chapter 9, verse, the word reads, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with great grief, yea, my soul and my belly. We can only imagine all the emotions Jesus was actually feeling at this moment. A soul aching, heartbreak, with eyes all cried out. Somehow he kept his spirit intact, just as he did his entire lifetime. Jesus knew to rely on God and to stand tall on the word of his Father in times of adversity. God is also a spirit, the spirit of truth and a willing spirit, willing to be a helper in times of need, well. a way maker in times when there you, you think there is no way, and a gracious, gracious grace giver 
whose mercy endureth forever. That's why God sent his only begotten son, Jesus. God created us in his own image. That image is our spirit. Our spirit is the non-physical part of us. The seed of emotions and character, our souls. Yes. Yes. When God accepts us, he remakes us yes. through transformation yes. into the image of his glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. His glory shines through our spirits when we obey God and let God be in control of every situation in our lives. Mm. Jesus was totally committed to his father even as he was being forsaken by the world. Jesus expressed dedication through supplication and continuing to practice obedience on the cross. Jesus had to be still. He trusted God, his Father, with all his heart. He could not lean on thoughts of fear, hurt, or pain from being slashed or pierced in the side. Come on. Jesus continued to be compassionate and understanding, yeah. displaying all the fruits of his Father's Spirit during a time of extreme trial and tribulation. We must apply this level of faith in our Father God also, just as Jesus. We have to surrender ourselves to God and let God have his way with us. Come on, Jesus. Jesus only did and said as he was instructed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. therefore, God expects us to do the same thing <laughs> in our lives. Yeah. Before we can be saved, we must obey God. We have to be obedient on earth and in heaven also. The Lord preserves the faith and plentifully rewards the proud door. Nothing unclean can get into heaven today or tomorrow. As Jesus hung on the cross, he was rest assured that his father, God, would gladly accept him because he was obedient. He trusted his father, and he knew he would be blessed by God's goodness. It was no doubt God heard his cries. But Jesus had to bear our sin and die of a spiritual death yes. so that whomsoever believes in him can be saved. Yes. Jesus had to trust the process, and so do we. In Romans, the 14th chapter, verse 11, for it is written, as I live, said the Lord, Every knee shall bow yeah. to well, me, well. Yeah. and every tongue shall confess to God. Accept Christ. Accept Christ today. Jesus died for us. Yeah. Blood yeah. was yeah. shed for you and me. Ah. Yeah. Through all of the agony and suffering, on Jesus oh. held on strongly yeah. to Come his faith. He was never moved yeah. because he knew he was about to defeat sin huh. and rise with all the victory yes. on the third day early. Yes. Jesus had a yes. purpose yes, he did. to bear God's wrath for sin for all mankind, yes. then and now, forevermore. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Uh -huh. And so it was official. The time had finally come Yes, yes. for our sin bearer, our burden bearer, uh, our redeemer, our deliverer, yes. yeah. our rock, yeah. come on, come on, man. our strong power yeah. uh, to commend his spirit back into thy hands yes. from which it came. Yes, yes. His father, mm -hmm. our father, God. God bless you all. And thank you.